Okay, so I have my blocking sketch. I have an idea of how I want to arrange these letter forms and what space they should take up. And now I'm going to DeFont. I know I want it to look kind of like traditional tattoos. And so I'm going to type in my text just to get a sense of what it might look like with these pre-designed. Some of the type will support special characters and some of it won't. Some of it will support uppercase and some of it won't. So I'll put in some special characters as well. Oh, and then I'm going to check on show variants because some of these typefaces have multiple multiple fonts. And what a font is, is a variation on a typeface. So when you bold a typeface or you italicize a typeface, so here we have the, the Reuters typeface, and then we have the italicized font of the Reuters typeface. So that's actually the proper use of font. And I like this one. This one looks pretty good. And I like that it supports special characters. But this one, I'm going to look at that a little bit bigger. I think that's the winner. Though it doesn't support special characters, I could always get special characters from a different typeface if I wanted. That's pretty nice. Maybe I want stars. We can mix and match typefaces. I kind of like those stars. But this one is nice and clear. I like the really jagged sawtooth design. Remember, these are all vectors. So you know what it takes to make a good vector. And then the crowning achievement of it, just extra positive, is that it's 100% free. So unlike all of these that are free for personal use, but you have to pay to use them professionally, I can get this one completely free, you know, download it and not worry about uh, giving attribution to Ryan Splint who created it or or paying some other fee in order to license it, right? So this is the equivalent of public domain for this typeface. So that's very generous. And you can see that 100, it was downloaded 122 times yesterday. It's been downloaded over a million times and used. So this seems like a pretty useful typeface. This one's really nice too, but this one says demo. Now, demo means that it's limited. It might not have all the letter forms. It might not be fully supported. So I would try to avoid ones that say demo. You can try them, but I'm going to show you now how to install them. So you saw that I clicked on download. So then it goes to wherever your computer downloads things. Downloading type files is pretty darn safe. This isn't like a, uh, a site with lots of different rip files and zip files and it's it's going to be pretty basic so if it comes in as a zip file you just unzip it and the the file type you're looking for is either an otf which is an open type file or a ttf and then you double click on the the type file and then you'll be taken to your computer's operating system program that allows you to install it and by installing it on your computer you'll have it for use in your programs, in your word processors, in your Photoshops, in your illustrators, right? So I encourage you to do that, but then you can also use the TTF file and install it into Photopea. So after I've done all my blocking, let me collapse my blocking layers now, merge them all into one, try to keep it pretty simple. So I have my illustration on one layer, and my blocking on the other layer. I just have a blank white background behind that. I'm going to get rid of my sketch. I don't need that anymore, right? And I can just keep, you know, saving my work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opacity down on my blocking sketch, and I'm going to use, for the first time, 
the vector type tools within PhotoP. I'm going to make my tools a little bit bigger so you can see this. So the type tool, it's a big T. I simply click and it will create a text box, right? And then I can just type in what I want. G O O D space P O I N T. Actually, I should just do one letter, one word first. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see because the default size is only 24 pixels. But there it is. And the default typeface, for whatever reason, is Deja Vu Sans. Maybe it's the last one I used for a project. I don't know. First thing I can do is I can slide that up to be bigger. And just because the slider ends at 150 pixels, it doesn't mean you're limited to only making your, your vector type that big. Because you see how there's a big T, that means that it is a type layer. It is not a rasterized layer unless I rasterize it, which means it's editable and it's changeable. So if I double click on the T, I get into the word processing part of it and I can change the type. I can do things like put a paragraph break after each letter so that it's vertical. Now, how do I make it bigger? Same way I make any layer bigger. I can use Control T and I can squeeze it. I can rotate it either as individual letters or as the whole, right? To rotate individual letters, I'd have to make a different type layer for each one. But I'm just blocking it in loosely right now. And then I double click and I can also change the typeface. So if you go to the typeface options here in the tools, there's an option for load font. If you click on that, you can go to where your computer downloaded your OTF or TTF file. And then you can load that right into PhotoP. And once it's loaded, then you can actually choose it. All right, so there you see, I was able to use Tattoo Ink, which means I'm able to edit with Tattoo Ink, and I'm able to customize. I can use Control T, and now I can size it to meet with my blocking sketch. So how can I rotate each individual letter? Well, now I just duplicate it. And then on the duplicate, I just erase away. Right. Duplicate. Replace that with a space and then erase away. Duplicate it again. Replace these with spaces. Erase away. Duplicate again. And I like how it renames. Whenever you use the type layer, it renames your layer with what you typed in that layer. So it makes it pretty easy to find it later. Then I replace all of these with three spaces. Oops, one. There we go. Okay, now I can do Control T and individually rotate each one. And individually work on the spacing, the kerning between, all of that with each one. So I'll start with the G. And 
and this is typesetting. What was traditionally done by um, designers in the magazine studio or in the newspaper house or in the ad agency, and they're actually cutting blocks of type out and then gluing them down at different angles with different spacing between them and then using a photo stat to kind of photograph just the black imprint to put it onto the film work for printing. Now we do it all digitally, which gives us a lot more options. We can also use the move tool and use the guides because our, our eye kind of subliminally picks up on things that don't quite line up or match. So I want to get a sense of what the middle weight line is and then play with these angles. I think I can make that D now a shallower angle and its readability is still pretty good. Maybe nudge it over with my arrow key a little bit. And then I'm thinking, okay, I have something pretty standardized there. What if I just try it and I can always duplicate and, and have options. But let's try tilting them all the same way. And it's very helpful to set them by hand, you know, not to take the default line spacing. that the computer gives you. So do I like that better? Or do I like that better? And then I might actually shrink the D a little bit. Just tuck it in at the corners. So it's all kind of what looks best to you. And then you tweak it. And this is just very simple customization. And they're all vectors still. We don't want to rasterize them. I might make that O slightly bigger, like these optical illusions that happen. So we want to treat type like it's its own illustration and really kind of be sensitive to all of the, the visual impacts it has. Use my arrow keys to kind of nudge them into place. So finding a typeface that you like is just the beginning. This is the careful typesetting. And I'm also trying to leave some room around them for different effects I might add, right? But ideally, I want it to work pretty well just in black. And that's the first thing you'll turn in is just your black type design. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, I'm going, before I, I mess with it further, I'm going to duplicate all of those. Or I can just do the same process, right? 